Good morning, this is your friendly school librarian, Ms. Werner Thomas. And today we're going to talk about how to use Google and Wikipedia for your research, for your English 12 research project. I'm going to Safari and I'm going to Google. The thing to remember whenever you use Google is that Google does not give you the best results. Google uses a really, really complicated al algorithm to decide what it thinks you want to see. So not the best information, not the most recent information, but the information that it believes you want to see. So for instance, if I were to put in information about protests, I've got news articles at the top. I've got some recent information from news here, then videos. BuzzFeed, 2020 protests, and Wikipedia. But here I've got um, an information, an article from NPR from July 30th. You would probably get something a little bit different because Google knows a lot about me. Google knows that I am a 38 year old white woman. It knows that I live outside Minneapolis. It knows that I work in Cottage Grove. It knows that I'm an educator. It knows all of those things and, and it knows my search history. And it uses all of that information to decide what it thinks I want to see. So one way that I can get more specific about the information I want to see is to use the tools. And that's right below the search bar. And I can say, you know what? I only want information from the past week. So now all of my results are things that have been published in the last week. So I know they're super up to date. This is kind of like what we did with the database the other day. I can also only search news sites, only look at videos. And again, when you're searching for videos using those tools, you can also search for really short videos if you want. You can search for videos that have closed captioning. You can also search for only videos on YouTube, for example. Something else you can do to get better search results is to use what's called a Boolean search. And I'm going to show you why that matters. Let's say I'm doing research on bass, like the bass guitar. Google knows that I like shopping, and Google knows that um, I have little kids who like to go fishing. And so my information here, I've got Bass Shoes, I've got Bass Pro Shops, and way down here I've got information about bass guitars. So how do I get just what I want here? So the first thing I'm gonna, I'm going to do is I'm gonna put quotation marks around that word. That means it will only give me stuff that actually has that word in it. And then I'm gonna say, no, I don't want fish and I don't want shoes. I put a minus in front of those and then I run my search again. So now all of my results are actually about bass guitars. So I can get more specific that way really easily. Next, I want to look at how to use Wikipedia in a responsible way. So if I search protests again, there's a notice to me at the top, first of all, that says this article has multiple issues. It may be in need of reorganization. It needs additional citations. It has too many pictures, charts, or diagrams for its overall length. So some of those are just editorial issues, but verification um, using citations is important. That's why you have to do citations. And I would suggest that if you need to learn a little bit more about something, hopefully you don't necessarily need new background information for this um, assignment, but one of the problems with Wikipedia is that it's so far away from the original source. So if I look at this picture, 
Um, this is from, from a 2012 protest in a demonstration against Mahmoud Ahmadinejad um, in 2012. If I were at this event reporting on it, my reporting would be what's called a primary source. This picture is what's called a primary source. Primary sources are the things that are produced by people who are there and people who have firsthand experience with the event. Secondary sources are sources that report on those primary sources. So that would be if you found an article where they spoke to people who were there, they interviewed people who were there, they interviewed people who are experts in the field, that would be a secondary resource. So now we are one, two steps away from the actual thing. Wikipedia uses those secondary sources often, sometimes primary sources. So now we are three steps away from the original event. And that leaves three steps of personal interpretation that can affect the information, which can be, can be a problem. But it's also just something you have to be aware of because everything your experience is going to have some sort of bias in it. But the best thing Wikipedia is for is if you know the background, I want you to click on the references in the article. And down at the bottom, you can find those primary and secondary sources that the authors of the Wikipedia article used to write it. So you can go there, you can read those, and then you can use that information for your project, for your research. So instead of using other people's interpretation of the information, you're going to interpret it yourself. I'm going to click on this Daniel L. Schofield article. It's from 1994, but it's about First Amendment implications in controlling public protest. So that's something that even though this is an older article, because it's about the First Amendment and interpretations of the Constitution, it could still be a valid source. This is still something I could use myself. So hopefully this will help you use Google a little bit smarter and use Wikipedia a little bit smarter. I hope you have a great day. As always, remember to ask me if you have any questions.